Recording is on, Mr. Chairman. Okay, it is 7 p.m. Uh, today is March 1st, and this is the meeting of the Willenberg Board of Health. We are in session. Members attending are George Eman as Chairman, Perry Jewell as Vice Chairman, Paul, Paul, uh, Fort yeah, Paul, 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 Paul Fortin. My God, Paul Fortin uh, is a third member, which gives us a quorum. First item on the agenda you is. Do the whole reading thing first. So, oh, yeah. Uh, Perry, you want to do the reading? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, you got to record that. As a preliminary matter, and uh, as our chairman, George Eman, has requested, uh, this is Perry Jewell, vice chair. Um, I'll do a roll call to confirm that all members and uh, and others that we anticipate participating uh, can hear me. Uh, beginning uh, with the members, uh, Mr. Chairman, George Eman, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Perry. And of course, I'm Perry Jewell, the vice chair. And uh, Mr. Paul Fortin, our scribe, may you hear me? Can you hear I'm me? Present. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. We're, I do not see at this time Evan Waters, our other member. There he is. He's just coming in. Oh, good. Um, Evan, uh, can you hear me? Ken, how are you? Good. This is Evan Waters, our remaining member. Um, we also then have present, uh, you know, our, our administrative assistant, Andrea Schnepp, and our uh, our agent, uh, Jim Goreffi. And uh, we have uh, Jack Maloney from Dillis and Roy, who uh, will be presenting the first two items that we have tonight. And uh, Dan Proctor, I believe, is associated with those as well and present. We expect uh, later, uh, you know, to have uh, Doug Smith from uh, Soil Smith Designs and perhaps uh, Anna Butter. In accordance um, with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel and that this meeting of the Board of Health is being conducted remotely. The town of Lunenburg in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health, Massachusetts Department of Public Health and CDC regarding the virus and steps communities can take to prevent the spread. And all town facilities are currently closed to the public except by appointment. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, the general law chapter 30A paragraph 20, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. The order, which you can find posted on the town website on the COVID-19 information center page, access through the town manager's webpage, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will allow public comment at the end limited to three minutes per speaker. For this meeting, um, the Board of Health is convening um, by Zoom as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that um, most attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be advised that other folks may be able to see you and take care in screen sharing your computer. Anything that you broadcast will be captured by the recording. Um, we'll be turning to the first item on the agenda, but before we do that, some general ground rules. Uh, the chairman will reduce, will introduce each uh, item on the agenda and each speaker 
after they conclude their remarks, the chair will go uh, and invite others to uh, provide comments, questions, or motions. Um, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps to generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to address other members, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote will, of this meeting will be taken by roll call vote. And so, Mr. Chairman, uh, with that, the meeting is all yours. Okay, thank you, Perry. The first item on our agenda tonight is for 466 Massachusetts Avenue. Um, it is for a Title V variance and a, a little bit of regulation to uh, reduce the, which one is this? Who's representing this? this uh, Jack. Jack, okay. Jack, why don't you tell us what you're doing here? You're lowering the bell uh, one. Jack just sent me a text. Apparently his computer crashed or something. Okay. Oh. So we have Dan. So I'm going to run with it. Hi, Dan. Dan, Dan Proctor. Okay. Uh, um, so I'll run with it. What we have is an existing three bedroom house with a failed Title V septic system. We have a proposed 1500 gallon tank, 1000 gallon pump chamber to a leach field, um, 15 feet by 40. 600 square foot. We have two minute and inch soils. We are asking for a five foot to four foot reduction in groundwater offset so that we can maintain uh, minimum grading off the low side of the property and aesthetically try to keep the yard uh, as minimal grading as possible. This property is serviced by town water and all the adjacent properties as well. Uh, it's on Mass Ave. It's across from uh, the donut shop just before uh, dipping donuts across the street from there sits yep. out in the back yep. right next to the Lunenburg water district new building i'm very familiar with the donut shop i'm sorry what was that i'm very familiar with the donut shop i know i know where that is i'm a, I'm a frequent customer um okay uh, this this is not a, a uh, uh this is just a straight system then I'm sorry, I'm really having a tough time hearing you, George. I apologize. Is that better? I'm, I'm hearing up an echo, so I don't want to hold it too much. This is a straight, uh, straight system. It's it's not a, an innovative system or anything like that. No, it's just a uh, conventional leach field, pipe and stone. Yep. Okay. Uh, I see nothing uh, wrong with this system. It looks like it's uh, it'll work. Well, Jim, uh, if you're here, or do you have any comments? So um, again, as Dan mentioned, it is a, a repair. Fixing a system that's in failure. Uh, the site is good size. The soil is really good. Our table for the area was a little bit higher than you might expect on the side of the hill, but actually not too bad. Um, there's no wells to be worried about. Uh, so I don't really see an issue with the reduction of the groundwater offset. Okay, good. Are there any other comments that anybody wants to make or questions? Okay, we can uh, uh, accept a motion to grant approval for this Title V uh, variance. So I'm gonna make a, yes. Okay, I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you too. You might wanna speak up a little bit, okay. Uh, a motion, motion. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Perry Jew. I was muted, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. uh, yes, I um, I would be happy to move that we grant this local upgrade approval that has been requested. Okay, a motion is on the floor that we grant uh, approval to this variance request. Um, all in favor say aye. We'll do this by a- We need a second, unless I missed it. Oh, we didn't get a second? Oh, okay. Do we get a second? <laughs> I thought we did. Okay. All four now give it a second. Thank you very much, Paul. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. We'll do this by a voice account. My name is George Demon. I'm chairman. 
and uh, I uh, uh, vote aye. Perry? Yep, Perry Jewel, Jewel, aye. Paul? Paul Fortin, aye. Evan? Waters, aye. Okay, the motion is granted unanimously uh, and is approved. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. The next one up is an offset to Rutland, uh, and only one deep hole was made uh, during the testing procedure, and it's, it's for 75 Ruth Street. And who is representing this uh, applicant? I am George Jack Maloney from Dillis and Roy. Jack, how are you? Good, and you? Good, thank you. Um, this is uh, an existing two bedroom dwelling. They want to make it a three bedroom dwelling. Um, and the way the property is, it, it doesn't allow us to uh, use the uh, Lunenburg regulations. We're strictly Title V on this. We're 50 feet away from the edge of Lake Shirley. Um, uh, Jim can explain to you a little bit more that the uh, topography really uh, inhibits um, most of the, the site here. Um, do you guys have the plan in front of you? No. Do you want me to share my screen so you could see the drawing? Yeah, if you can, that would be helpful. We yeah. have several people here who are using cell phones, so it's not going to be much use to them, but I'd like to see you, please. Um, okay, I can't share it. It says okay. the host disabled it, so I'm not sure okay, if that's no you problem. guys or... But anyway, um, so... <clears throat> We, the only issue that Jim and I had during this whole process is um, uh, the existing well. It's a shallow well, and we found out uh, late in the um, design stages that uh, there was a well pump in the house, which we could not meet 100 feet away from. So I talked with the owner, and he has decided to drill a new well adjacent to the existing shallow well which would put the 100 foot radius uh, outside of where we're working with the new septic system. So the variances that we'd be looking for, uh, local one, section two from the Lunenburg Board of Health regulations, all septic systems constructed shall not be located less than 100 feet from any water course or bordering vegetative wetland. We have 57.4 and we do have uh, um, one local upgrade approval. Uh, it's 154051K. At least one deep hole has been performed in the proposed disposal area and reserve area. The soil testing reform adequately characterizes the soil for the purposes of designing the septic system. Both the test holes that we did had um, sand and gravel soils down to 114 on 118 inches. And we basically use the high water mark for the uh, five foot or for the groundwater table on this. Okay. Jim? Sure. So the, um, the property is good size, it's about an acre and three quarters. Um, though it does, the, the pond does kind of circle in there a little tighter. As Jack mentioned, the soil is very good. Uh, the topography about where the driveway is and then probably because of the well, the usable piece of the property for your septic system um, kind of slopes off quickly to the pond. Um, so trying to, you know, in, in trying to get the system up, you know, get it as far away from the wetlands, but not get it directly under the, the driveway, um, they'll need to get an, you know, the offset reduction from the board. Uh, the system, <clears throat> in, instead of being a deeper pit like the existing system is, Will be somewhat shallower uh, to be able to maintain the offset, the water offset. Um, and with the new well, I think it makes it a lot better as far as the water quality, potential water quality for the house and uh, the potential for it to contaminate the lake. Um, yeah, if you're maintaining that five foot offset with existing systems. Okay, where we're, we're going to be drilling a new well. Um, 
would that be a situation where we would withhold the COC until that well was in and tested and approved? Uh, well, again, that would be done as part of that. The, um, so, so there's two things they could do here. One is to drill a new well, which they've chosen to do. Right. The other thing, as Jack was mentioned, the reason you need the uh, the variance, uh, or the, uh, the reason they're drilling the new well is because the uh, Title V states that you have to maintain a 100-foot offset right. in a suction line, a section water line, yep. and, the, um, uh, and the leaching area. So one of the other things they could do, and, and occasionally we see people do, is they put a submersible pump in their shallow well, um, and thereby fixing the problem that the suction line causes. So I, I guess, George, to answer your question in a very long way, if for some reason the well, the drilled well didn't work out, they have an option to put a submersible pump potentially in that drilled, I mean, that shallow well and, and service the house with a pressure line. And this is going from a two bedroom to a three bedroom? Correct. Yes, that's, that's what the, what the said. Uh, I, I guess, I guess I don't have a, a problem with, with uh, what they want to do. I, I guess my only, my only concern is, is the, the iffy on, on the, uh, on, on the new well, as opposed to a, a pump. The uh, Jack's telling us that the he's decided to put in that pump, uh, put in a new well. But I want to make sure that well goes in there. And I'm wondering if if by withholding a seal till the well is put in, and it tests out okay, that uh, we're not taking care of a little bit more business here. Maybe it's not. What do you think, Jim? So that'll be a condition of the permit that they install the well uh, and have it tested in accordance right. with your regulations. Let's yeah. say for some reason it. And that neck of the woods down around the lake can be kind of iffy for drilled wells. If for some reason they ran into a problem with water quality or water quantity, again, I think they have the option to go back to the shallow well uh, and change the pump out to make a, a pressure line to the house. I, I, I'm not objecting to that if that condition arises. And I'm not objecting to doing that. I just want to make sure that the paperwork and you know, often if that uh, someone goes looking at this thing and they'll, they'll see that that's actually what happened as opposed to expecting to find a well, uh, a new drill well and not finding it, that's that's all okay. And I think that's the way we'll do it. We'll, okay. we'll make the conditions on the permit, George. Yes, thank you, sir. That's all I wanted to know. Uh, okay, uh, anybody else have any comments or questions? No, okay. Would someone like to make a motion that we grant a uh, of grant these uh, variances or not grant the variances. Anybody got any other concerns? Or make a motion. All right, I just have a quick question. Um, for my own knowledge, from not knowing the differences here, but that's see, how you get answers. Yeah. 100 feet as is is obviously a certain number, but having 57.4 feet being almost half is that. I mean, in my mind, that seems like a bad thing, but I don't know enough about these variances to, to, to know for sure whether or not it's a bad thing. Is that just, is, is the 100 feet sort of overcautious? Uh, the 50 feet is the minimum for the state requirement. So each town has that home rule uh, where they can go above and beyond Title V. In this case, uh, Lunenburg has the 100 foot. Uh, if this were a septic system upgrade, we'd still have the option of going to a 50 foot or up to the 50 feet if we are fixing it. But uh, seeing that because what we have and, and if you had seen the site, we're right on the edge of the driveway or partially under it. And if we were to go any way further away, we'd be underneath completely of that driveway or we'd be into a one to one slope uh, embankment that goes up the rest of the way to the property line which makes it very difficult for construction. Evan, do you have a copy of Title V? Uh, no, I don't think I ever did. Okay, you know what, I've, I've got it on on, uh, on my computer, one of my computers. I'll email you a copy of it. And if that you would be want fantastic, thank you. Pages, it's, it's, it's up to you. At least for a reference at the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you and you can uh, you know, have it in, nothing else to do uh, you can you can look through it 
Mr. Chairman, I might just add something too, if you, if I may. Okay. No, just that I, Evan, I, I think we all go through this as we, you know, start working on this. I, I was struck for quite a while by like why, why Lunenburg has done some of these things, but I, I think a lot of it has to do with not that we question that the state's requirements are good enough. They, I think we. We're quite comfortable with them. It's more a matter that we would like when we're, when we've got situations that that would be close, you know, to those. Then by dub, basically doubling what's required for all the local ones, it allows us to take a close look at those, and then, like in this case, perhaps make some additional contingencies, like with regard to the wells or something else. That it just makes sure that we're aware of anything that might be getting close to the state requirement. It's not that we question the adequacy of the state requirement so much, but it, uh, it allows us to do just what we did tonight, really. It's fairly yes. routine that we will um, allow, uh, you know, our own uh, numbers to be varied, but only we look at it carefully before we do that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. No, that, that's kind of my my take on it. That's not an official position. It's just uh, <laughs> it just this this hundred foot Bloomberg regulation, uh, Evan. It, it it's it's been around goodness for forever. Uh, the reason is, as Perry pointed out, he's rightfully doing it that way. Is is that occasionally you will run into a situation where uh, you want to take another closer look at it. Perhaps it's something physically with the, with the property that you're a little bit concerned about, or uh, maybe there's a, 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 a budding situation where it could impact the uh, abutting property if, if a septic system ever had to be put in there. Uh, this happens to be one of the, probably the most uh, varied uh, regulation that we have on the Lunenburg side. Uh, it's uh, not uncommon for, for this one to be very routinely. This one, there's, there's a little bit of a catch in it, which is, is which is why we're a condition on it, just to make sure that everything's uh, good, you know, for, for a long period of time. Nothing is worse than, than uh, granting a variance and then have it come back and, and uh, get at your toes a little bit in a few years down the road. Uh, you'll, uh, you'll see this once in a while. It's it's not, not uh, very often that we run into something like this, but we would not vary it. Okay. I that Thank you. A little bit too. Okay. No, I really did. I, I very much appreciate looking. the explanations. Yeah, still looking for a variant. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, somebody. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to move that we grant um, okay. this, uh, variance and local upgrade approval. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to grant the request. We have a. Uh, I would second the motion. The motion is made and seconded that we grant this request. All in favor, uh, we will say aye. But, uh, uh, voice vote. Kirk Heeman, aye. Perry. Perry Jewell, aye. Paul. Paul Fordon, aye. And Evan. Evan Waters, aye. Okay, the motion and variances are granted uh, unanimously. Good. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And next we have 60 Woodland. I don't know if that's Woodland Terrace, Woodland Street, Woodland Road. Woodland Drive. Woodward Drive. <laughs> so many. I think that it's familiar to me for some reason. I don't. It's, uh, know. Right off of uh, Townsend Harbor Road, right across from the um, from the dam. Yeah, much. no, I, I I know where it is. I'm I'm just I'm just wondering why it, it's this address is familiar to me, and I don't know. I really don't know why. Uh, on behalf of our clients, uh, Michael Favor, Dushan, and Delisto, you will get huh? Respect request for the following local upgrade approvals: reduction of the system setbacks from a well 100 feet. 79 feet are provided. 405 1J, reduction of the requirement of 12 foot, uh, yeah, 12 inch separation between outlet keys and high groundwater provided is. Okay, point two four. Tell me what that means. I can't. Uh, we have uh, point two four feet 
to 0.78 feet above the uh, water table. So okay. two, two tenths to three quarters of a foot. This is a little hard to read. And uh, Duchamp and Delo Seals, we have provided uh, acceptable engineering designs for the above reference, which provides the same amount of environmental protection as would strict compliance with the town of Lundberg health rules and regulations. Okay, uh, go ahead. Um, so, uh, I mean, you already read the variances. Basically, the, the house sits close to the road. Uh, the existing septic tank and leach field are out behind the house. Uh, the lot, if you can picture this, from the back of the house to the back property line kind of goes up in grade, probably five or six feet or seven or eight feet. Um, so the septic tanks we've tucked in about 11 feet off the back wall of the house. Uh, given the existing plumbing, I believe it's a slab foundation, so it comes out fairly deep. So uh, in order for us to match the elevation of the plumbing coming out, the tanks had to be uh, a little bit deeper in the ground. Um, so we have a new septic tank pump chamber up to a Presby system up in the back. Uh, it is a raised system. And um, due to the proximity to the existing well, we have kept a four foot offset, um, which would you know give it a, a sizable mound in the back. Uh, other than that, there's no other wells on the abutting properties that are affected by this. It's just the well that's on the property. And we've pushed, well it, pushed it as far back as from, from the well as we possibly could. Yeah. That must be a little two minute perk down there. Um, no, I think the, the perk was uh, nine minutes an inch. Really? Well, yeah, it was, it, was, it was like a lonely sand, George. It was, it was pretty decent stuff for being down there. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, this, there's a section. As you're going down, if you're heading to the Townsend's that on the left or the right hand side of the road? On Townsend Harbor Road, you know? It's on the right hand side. And it's the right, upper okay. it's the upper part yeah. of Woodland Road on the loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other side's all too many. You're on the bad side. Okay. Jim, you have any comment? Sure. So I don't necessarily have uh, an issue with uh, repairs in general, but when it comes to wells and, and less than hundred feet, uh, not a big fan of that, particularly when there's municipal water in the street. So I would recommend that the would grant that variance with the local upgrade approval for that offset reduction. Again, there's town water in the road and, and town water would be preferable to keeping an existing well that we don't know the age or the construction of uh, or the quality of the water. Um, again, my recommendation would be to tie to town water. Uh, even if they were to come back then and ask for a groundwater reduction for the leaching area, that in my mind would be a more protective situation having the system at four feet and having the well less than 100 feet from the, uh, the okay so you're of the opinion that would be 300 foot is there is there a number that you would be happy with or uh well unfortunately you're not going to get 100 feet because you'd have to push it almost up by the property line in the back part of that and so you have a system upgrading into the well um, and you got town water in the street so again uh, my recommendation uh, would be to tie in. If, if you didn't have town water, all bets are off. You've got to deal with what you've got to deal with. Yeah. But you do have town water. So that, to me, would be the recommendation to, to go. You're, the board is certainly within your right to grant the uh, local upgrade approval. Yeah. But again, um, as we're looking at maximum feasible compliance and we're looking at having town water in the street, um, that would be the way I would recommend the board go. Yeah, I, I, understand, I understand. Any other comments, questions here? Okay, uh, I, I, I do have a comment. Uh, I've seen it go uh, you know, a lot worse than this. I've seen it go from 100 feet to 60 feet. I've seen it go to 44 feet. I've seen it go to 55 feet. And 79 feet to me is pretty good. Um, I, I guess, uh, how old is this property? Um, do you have any idea? Does this go back to the 50? Uh, that I don't know, George. Off I looked it up. I'm sorry? I'm looking it up. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Perry yes. Jewell. Yes, Perry. It was built uh, in I 1950. Guess I, would just, I know that Jack may be uh, 
at a disadvantage here because he's kind of one step removed from the owners of the property. But do you know if any, Jack, do you know if any discussion uh, has been had with the clients with regard to uh, connecting to town water or with, uh, are they aware they could and, and the cost? Uh, and I, that I have not, I, I have not discussed with them. Okay. So, I mean, if, if there's a situation, like Jim said, if we, if we, uh, if they do want to connect with town water, we could come back and ask for a one foot reduction. Um, that would probably be in their best interest to do that. Um, but, um, I mean, it's entirely up to them, I guess. Um, I, I understand the board's, uh, you know, if the board votes against this in regards to, well, not votes against, but puts a condition on that they tie in. Um, personally, I don't have a problem with that, but, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, my client would definitely need to know. To tell you the, the honest truth, when I was out there doing the testing, I walked up and down the street and I didn't realize there was town water there because I didn't see a hydrant within a few hundred feet of this house. So kind of took me by surprise at the beginning of this. Yeah, yeah. Find out when it was built in 1950. Yeah, okay. According to the assessor records, yeah, it was sold in 2019. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably correct. Uh, that entire area down there was, was developed in the 50s. As a matter of fact, my, uh, the reason I know that is like my father worked down there when they were building when they were doing all that work down there. Um, what was another question? Do you know, uh, Jack, if, if uh, any fairly recent water testing has been done on that water? I, I do not. Okay. okay. Ms. Mr. Chairman, Ferry Jewel again, too, maybe through you to Andrea. Do we have any information on that well as to how old it is or how deep it is, or is it a, you know, is it a an artesian or is it a, I don't know. There's, I there's a concrete I well tile around it. Okay. Well, sometimes those are there anyway. You know, we, with either type of well, quite frankly. Right. I didn't. Uh, I did not open the cover when I was there to to take a peek in. Sure. So we don't know how old, uh, Andrea. We don't have any records on the well. I am looking now, but it doesn't appear to be. I would presume it was put in when the when the property when the house was built. No, no, I have, you know, septic permit from 1955, which is the original one. I have an 80 uh, septic permit from 1981, which was an emergency installation into wet clay. Yeah. And that's all I have. I don't have anything on the well. Okay. Normally, I, I would I would have no, no problem at all recommending approval for this. Just too many little small things here. We don't know what kind of well it is. It's probably a, uh, just a surface well. Eight minute perk. It's, it was, uh, it's one of the reasons I asked about the, the perk rate, whether it was uh, sand or gravel. It's not. So I guess this my, says my, wet clay. my feeling is that I, I guess we should hold to the 100 feet or connect to town water. Any other comments or questions? Would someone like to make a motion on this? Uh... Well, Mr. Chairman, this is Perry Jewell. I, the only other question I would have here would be whether or not it would would do would be better to just uh, or perhaps to table this till the next meeting and maybe get some more information if we could on the well, and uh, to sh have uh, someone discuss this with the uh, with the homeowner. I you know. I don't really want to create a hardship, you know, I don't know no, that's, that's, how long that's they've been there. And I know there is cost involved in connecting to town water and then there is mm -hmm. monthly, uh, there are monthly fees with that. Uh, so I, that. Uh, I, yeah, I have I, no objection to doing that. Um, I, I would, uh, I would like to see some more information, some more information. Would the uh, remaining members to the board be uh, Okay, let's go along with that until the next meeting. Does anybody have an objection to it? Let me put that way. I don't hear oh, anything. I would prefer to, to have a little more information and to have the owners have a chance to 
Okay, good. Thank you. And, and George, just to let you know, I don't have any issue with that either. So we could do good, that. Good, good. You know what? Uh, if we can do that, if we can get more information on the well. Also, uh, if we can get a well test to see, you know, the quality of the water, that would help a lot. It would help an awful lot. Okay. Okay. Can if we can do that, get some information on the well and. and um, We've got records on the septic system and done down here. So we probably have some information that we can get. A, a, I got nothing. I'm sorry? I got nothing on the well. There is nothing on, on the well. Well, we get out of the system. I don't know how we would uh, determine yeah, if there's, if there's a way we can tell us what kind of is it a dug well? Is it, is it, is it, is it a is it a uh, Whatever we can pick up for us, too. A lot. Yep. Let's, I'll do that. Okay, let's do that for the next meeting then. 7 15 on March 15th. Did you get that check? I did. Thank you very much. You're we'll continue it to that time. We'll continue it. 7 15 on March 15th. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> hey, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Thanks a lot. Appreciate no it. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I'm just making myself a note, people. Uh, let's see. Okay, then next. Next is what? Who is next? Where is it? Okay, there it is. 310 Sunny Hill Road. I messed up on gender. I skipped the 738 box. You don't have to have that. To who? 224? No, okay. When is it now? Somebody whistle? Somebody know how to whistle? Does anybody sing well? Nobody brought their bongo drums. Hey, Andrea. Well, I guess I'm yeah. muted. I uh, put in my nomination papers. Are we having a caucus? I thought we were having a caucus. Have you well, heard anything? I'm not, I'm not sure, but I just want to say that um, I'm excited to serve with my best people again, including Evan, our new member. Yes, indeed. I am going to, as we're sitting here, send a message to Kathy um, to see how we're doing this, because I'll forget otherwise. As far as I heard on the last Thursday's FinCom meeting, Heather was saying that they're still gonna have a caucus. I don't know how- That's they're... what I thought, but it would be like really mm -hmm. soon. It's like uh, the ninth Give me a few minutes, I, can look. I have the- I have the dates if you want. I think uh, this is Perry Jewell, the vice chair. I think what George was, why we're transgressing here for a moment is that um, we're, we're waiting because the next item on the agenda here, which is one of Doug Smith's, is uh, one that required notification of a butter, I mean, a butter. And uh, so we, we really hate to, to take it up before it's scheduled on the agenda, because in, just in case that a butter might want to join the meeting after having been notified. So um i guess you know george what you could do is take up some other items i think we have some minutes you can, minutes. You can do the minutes yep but, the minutes. but we don't have uh, an opportunity to read the minutes from the last meeting in january january 4th yep i have i have too uh i i would be happy mr chairman to move that we Except those January fourth uh, 
And it should say 2021 uh, is the date on the agenda minutes. Uh, since we had to postpone our last meeting due to, uh, or cancel our last meeting due to the snow. Oh, In oh, any yeah. event, uh, I've read those minutes and I would make the motion that we approve them. I would second that. Motion's made and seconded to accept the minutes from January 4th, 2021. All in favor? Jerry Demon, aye. Jerry Jewell, aye. Paul Fortin, aye. Waters, aye. Okay, we're good. Uh, let's see. Did you find that date for caucus seven? I haven't seen anything about I haven't caucus either. Caucus. So I have and a tentative they... date of March 8th. March okay. 8th. Yeah, that's that's, that's the week that, that's next Monday. The Very reason soon. I ask is they told us this last time and then we didn't have a caucus. So for people that are running, we have Paul running, and I think our open seat is the other one um, that is up this year. So it became a little bit of a scurry for people that were running who thought we were gonna have caucus and then we didn't. So Paul is prepared. The other um, seat that's open is one that isn't filled currently. Well, I'm a little chagrined that there's been no notification. Nope, not that I've seen. Yeah, all I Kevin have- is sharing his screen here now. This is what was sent out. I mean, this was sent out a while ago, um, just has the eighth, but I haven't heard anything other than it is still happening, but I have not heard that it was the eighth. I thought it was honestly a, a few weeks after. They sent that. an email to Kathy as we're sitting here. So I'll, I'll let you know what her response is tomorrow. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can figure out- Well, let's see if I've seen any other emails that I've received. There's nothing on the website either about caucus. No. So I don't know. Just only the Citizens Party caucus will be held at the Middle High School Auditorium March 15th, 2021 at 7 p.m. So that's the same night as our meeting. So if you are not nominated at the caucus and wish to run for office, you may contact the clerk's office. So what we've done in the past um, is we've made our meeting earlier. So I have two things on the agenda now. Instead of doing time start to 7.15, we can do it to 6.15, we can do it to 5.15, have an early meeting, and then go over to caucus if, if you guys want to do it that way. That's what we've done in the past, and I like that idea. Right. So on here it says the Citizens Party Caucus will be on March 15th at 7 p.m. Well, let's see what happens with this caucus. Um, I'll let you know when I get an email. Um, yes. And then well, we'll we, just adjust our meeting if that's I wouldn't, cool. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't rely only on, on, a, on a, an email coming from somebody. I would actively call someone to come tomorrow. You know, who's, uh, I emailed Kathy, the town clerk. So whatever she tells me, I'm sure is correct. OK, when well, she gets back to us, yeah, she hasn't yet. I forget who the chairman of that. Same, same as it always is. I can't it's remember. Always, well, I'm trying to think of who it is. It changes. Mr. Chairman, this is Perry Jewell again. Did you want yes. to move to another agenda item in, in the next video? You can, you can just hold that, I guess. Unless Jim's got a lot. The old business, new business. Jim, do you want to talk about uh, the COVID situation with us? Oh, it seems like for the last year I've wanted to talk about COVID. <laughs> uh, why should I stop now, right? Well, every other day the government gets something new to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, we usually find out about it about an hour before he's going to say it. So, oh, that's uh, cool. that's cool. <laughs> well, that's better than it used to be, which was the same time. So, um, I guess uh, starting today, uh, the state is in phase three, step two 
uh, because of the improvement in the public health metrics. So it's a good that we're seeing an improvement in the public health metrics, and hopefully that continues. Um, and I suppose it's good for businesses that uh, they're allowed some additional capacity. Uh, the, the probably the most significant change is that in most cases, capacity is now at about 50% of uh, their approved capacity for businesses. Uh, with the exception of restaurants, uh, restaurants have no approved capacity other than the seating that you might have on your permit, but they need to maintain six feet between tables uh, and the other issue, the other um, control items that were in place, uh, making sure that people are at the tables for any more than 90 minutes, uh, making sure there's no more than six feet, you know, six people at the table, um, mask worn until your meals come. So, so again, I guess that's probably a better situation for the restaurants and that they can uh, kind of creatively set up their spaces to allow uh, better occupancy and maybe a little better business in those places. So um, th that's kind of the changes that happened today. Um, with those changes, with the announcement of those changes, the governor also stated that uh, they're gonna look at uh, possibly going to phase four, step one, um, maybe as soon as the 22nd of March. And again, it's really dependent on continuation of good public health measures uh, the metrics going in the right direction. Um, we'll see what happens in that situation. Again, I hope for all kinds of reasons that we keep having the cases go down. Uh, that just makes uh, life a whole lot easier for everybody and, and hopefully uh, get us closer to the conclusion of whatever this is going to be. Um, hopefully vaccine rollout is, is making it a difference. Um, you, just to kind of give you an indication of Lunenburg about a month ago, the two week rolling average for the state was uh, for the uh, town, the state's two week rolling average as they, uh, they reported for each town was about 81 cases in Lunenburg. I think it's about, uh, what is it? Uh, the last two week session was 20, 28. So okay. a pretty good drop in, in Lunenburg, even though Lunenburg <laughs> wise, seems to be kind of a stubborn runner as far as cases go. Um, you have been you have been in the yellow for a couple of weeks now, as far as the risk map goes. Although the risk map doesn't seem to be determining uh, what what businesses can and can't be open anymore, so they disconnected those two things for whatever reason. Um, and again, we, we are even in, in Lunenburg, we are seeing the number of cases go down. It's just that uh, they're going down slower than in a lot of the other communities. Not quite sure why, but that it is the case. Um, I don't know if anybody else, uh, as far as the vaccine rollout goes, there's no new news as far as whether local boards can do uh, clinics uh, still because of the tight supply. Uh, they're really pushing these uh, mass vaccination sites. I understand the efficiency of them. I understand the governor's probably trying to show the federal government that we are putting vaccine in people's arms. And the fact, probably the best way for him to show that we're doing a lot of that is to run these mass clinics. Uh, certainly doesn't uh, free up the frustration of people in town who don't like the idea of having to travel um, to these mass sites. Um, we will finish up, we, the, the district, the health district, will finish up our second dose clinics. Um, we have one on Wednesday, um, and then we have one on the 11th of March and one on the 25th for those people that we have administered a first dose to already, and those will be at Devon's. Uh, but after that, unless Unless all of a sudden they find a whole bunch of this J&J &J vaccine under the mattress someplace and send it out to us, um, I think we'll be kind of suspended as far as clinic is to go. I don't know if anyone has any questions or any comments. Hey, Jim, I got a comment. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I get my uh, vaccination tomorrow at five o'clock down in Worcester. Okay. What, what, what side are you going college? to? Uh, I think it's I'm not sure. My wife set it up for me. God bless her. But uh, I'm excited to get it. I think it's Worcester State. Yeah. It's Worcester is off Front Street. It's in a, it's in right. It's Latin. Worcester State. But I think it's in conjunction with St. Vincent's Hospital. That one. As opposed to being the state. I mean, it's still the state. but. Well, the state is partnered with a number of, number of different entities. So CIC Health is the group that runs Gillette and Fenway. Um, I forget the name of the group that's working out in the western part of the state. I think Circle Health is another group that's working on these mass sites. They've also allowed, the state has allowed or approved 11, 11 regional collaboratives. Uh, some of them are, uh, you know, hospital pairing up with health departments. Um, so, so there's 
throughout the state, there's 11 large sites. So these regional collaborators have to have the capability of vaccinating 750 people a day, five days a week, and they have to be open to the entire state. They can't be uh, regional. They can't be local clinics, if you will. So it uh, it's a pretty high bar for something like that for us to be able to do. It's, what's most bothersome to me is, is that we, no matter how much, no how much the state gets, the smaller towns won't see any of it because making these massive places where they want you to drive 50, 75 miles round trip, you're going to be gone two or three hours. And uh, pretty much what the, what the governor has done or what the state has done, whatever you want to say it, is disenfranchised about a third of the population of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts just to be able to force people to drive ridiculous places when it's, when it's really unnecessary. You know, we here at the show, but we, we were able to uh, come up with a way to service all 15 of our towns. What they did actually is they actually cut off, cut us off completely. We were doing uh, various clinics to inject people with, with what we had. And then the state just arbitrarily said, no, you're not getting any more because we're gonna put more, make more of these massive, massive ones. So if you live near one of these things, you've got no problem at all. But if you live out in the Western part of the state or even here along the, the borders of New Hampshire, you, uh, you're a little bit hard pressed to be able to get out and to get a shot. The, it's, I don't have problems with the giving of the shots. I guess I have problems with the distribution of the available vaccine that the, the state is giving us. Uh, I do know that there's been some complaints by other towns more uh, southerly than we are uh, on the same thing, but nothing needs to happen. Witness what Jim just told you that there's a ton, 11 towns that got together and, and formed a consortium, as they call it. But in tonight's uh, Sentinel, actually, Today's uh, Sentinel's big article about it. And again, uh, when you put one of those things together, it's dedicated to you. It's dedicated to anybody who wants to take the drive. And they can go and come in from anywhere in the common, uh, anywhere in the, in the state and get one of the, the vaccines. I think if a vaccine goes to an area, it should stay in that area. That's my personal opinion. If you disagree with it, that's fine with me. Is it eight o'clock yet? I think it's no. close enough. Well, five off. Did I get seven off? Anybody get closer to seven off? No. Okay. We got to wait a few more minutes anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, with that, we said a notification to an abutter. Yeah, you really need to make sure you're staying on time with that one. Yeah. Jim, I might have one observation i guess i thought it was interesting on the most recent report that the number of cases in lunenburg on according to the neshoba records is is getting closer in, to the state number yeah or vice versa whichever the case may be but i think they only differed by one yeah no i i noticed that too when i put that information together it's like huh, we're, we're narrowing the gap if you will yeah i'm not quite sure how that happens but um <laughs> So anyway. again, there are there are cases that are probable. So if you go get an antigen test, you get one yeah. of these rapid tests. Yeah. Um, those don't show up in the state's numbers because they're not considered confirmed cases. Yes. They're, 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 for all intents and purposes, they're a confirmed case of COVID. Uh, but because of the definition that uh, the federal government uses across states, a confirmed case is defined as as mm -hmm. a you know a case that you show positive with a PCR test. So I took out, uh, there were probably about nine probable cases um, uh, out of the numbers. So maybe that's the difference now that we're really down to. Maybe so, part of it, sure. Yeah. Yeah. How, do they define, how do they define a probable case? Uh, so the, the uh, antigen test is considered a prescriptive test. So it's, it's measuring, I think, a, a byproduct of the, the replication of the vaccine. So as opposed to a diagnostic test, which identifies the actual vaccine in your body, um, it's it's considered prescriptive or prescri I think prescriptive is the term that they use. Yeah. So with, with a PCR, 
they can say that you have the virus in your body and so that's a confirmed test. With a, con a, a prescriptive test, they're saying you have evidence that the, vac the virus is in your body because of what it may be producing, a protein. Yeah. Um, and, and why they don't consider that a confirmed case, I don't know. It's, I'm, okay, I'm gonna... that's, a, that's my question. What's yeah. the difference between a confirmed case and a probable? Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. merely a definition that has to do with the type of test that's being given and, and what that test tells you. Okay. So you could be equally as sick with either of them? Could be. Yep, but you would know it. So a, a, uh, a antigen test performed closely you know, when somebody is symptomatic is considered a bit more accurate because you're not only exhibiting the symptoms of, but you're showing that uh, uh, you're, you're, you're shedding that protein or whatever material that's being produced by the, the replicating virus. So it, it makes, but again, all along the state is considered a, they've always kind of erred on the side of caution. If you have a, an anti positive antigen test that consider you positive, uh, if you have a positive antigen test and you, um, for, a good, uh, for example, if you're traveling and you do an antigen test and it's negative, they want you to confirm that test with a PCR uh, before you get out of the, the quarantining for travel. So it, there's still a, a, not a complete comfort level of what that antigen test is telling you. Nope. Amazing. Uh. Okay, my watch says it's eight o'clock. So we should move off to 24 Townsend Harbor Road. Yeah, and I show no uh, no one else asking uh, yeah. to be uh, admitted. And uh, is that this one here? Okay, this is, uh... yeah, Doug, Doug, are you here? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, well, good. We're so happy to see you, Doug. Oh, good to see you also. It's good to be seen. It's been a while, Doug. The variances that are requested are uh, CMR 15-4051-G, reduction minimum distance from a septic system to a private well looking for a 65 feet separation to an abutters well. Now I assume that the other one is, is a good. 4051B requesting a reduction in minimum distance of 10 feet from the tank to a crawl space. Requesting an LUA to have a five foot separation. Lunenberg, uh, this is a Lunenberg uh, variance uh, request for the absorption system constructed after, well, thereafter, unless otherwise specified by the Board of Health shall not be located less than 100 feet from uh, a well distance of 50 feet. Okay, Doug, tell us all about it. All right, this is a, um, this is the A-frame house, right? Uh, on Townsend Harbor Road, right across some of the dam. House is built around 1955. Mm -hmm. I originally did a plan on this site in 2009 for someone else and never got submitted. The people um, that were going to buy the house, they ended up, it fell through. So now a new person came around, wanted me to reactivate the plan, which I did. Um, Every house in the neighborhood is on town water except the next door neighbor at two, um, 230 Townsend Harbor Road. And they do have a well, and that's the one that's 65 feet away from this proposed system. Uh, in the meantime, the conservation a week or two ago did approve the uh, notice of intent on this. Um, 
job, this site. So they did um, approve that with the new wetland flags and everything else that I had put in. So it's uh, the system just barely fits to be 50 feet from the wetlands. And uh, as you know, it has to be 65 feet from that about as well to, uh, to be in there. And other than that, it, um, it's the only real place the system can squeeze in on, on this particular lot. The reason I have the tank where it is, um, that's where the plumbing pipe comes out of the house now. So without having to have elbows and 45s and, and all that, it gives it a straight run from the, from the house to the side of the tank. And then it would have a pump to go back. And I, I'm keeping this at the full height of being five feet above um, sea, high water because of that um, distance to the well, just to get the best protection. And, and there's a poly barrier on the side of the system that heads towards that well that helps out with the breakout. And I think it might give a little protection also for the um, for that well in question. Jim, you got comments, please? Sure, so uh, unfortunately it's a really small lot, really tough site conditions. Uh, the wetlands seem to knock off that back portion of the lot. Um, again, there's a well on the other side. Uh, the difference here is the owner doesn't really have any control over the well. If the person wants to keep the well, they should be entitled to keep that well. Um, right. Doug, do you know what exists there for a system now? I, I'm gonna suspect it's either a pit or a cesspool. Um, I believe it's just an old cesspool, an old tank, and then the uh, small pit after that. So, so the, the leaching area will at least get the wastewater, uh, th that offset between the bottom of the leaching area, five feet above the water table. So you're creating a better situation in that regard. Um, probably not getting any closer than the cesspool was to the individual as well. So the design, though it needs these variances, and though it's too close to the well, there's certainly a better situation than what was existing there. You've gotten a lot closer to compliance with the code. Um, and again, just the site conditions are making it uh, impossible to meet full compliance with the code. The, excuse me, Doug, did, 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 uh, did you say that the this property here is on uh, uh, district water? Yeah, the, the A-frame house the, that I'm doing the work for is on municipal water, yes. Okay, okay. Because this property, water, the abutter as well shouldn't impact it. So I, I don't have any issues with these requests. Does anybody have anything to say or comments or want to make a motion? Miss, Mr. Chairman, Superior Jewel, I just said that I didn't quite understand. Um, the last statement, I guess, where the actual distance is 50 feet. What was that in reference to? That is to do with 50 feet to the wetlands themselves, to the- Oh, the uh, wetlands. Okay, that's yes. not, because you had this, uh, I thought this BVW was the well or something. Bordering vegetated wetlands. Okay, yeah. that's what that is. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I understand. Welcome. Okay. I, Mr. Chairman, I have, I would, uh, I would move that we accept uh, this, um, you know, upgrade request and uh, these, these two uh, or three, I guess there's really what, two or three here. I guess there's uh, two local. Uh, well, there's, there are three. Three, there's actually three. Yeah, there's, there's, there's two for the state, one for us. I would move that we accept these, uh, these three variances. Okay. Motion's made. Can we have a Request. second on this motion? I'll second that, Mr. Chairman. Paul Fortin. Paul Fortin. 
uh, motion has been made and seconded that we grant the variances, two variances from Title V, one variance from uh, Lunenburg regulations. All in favor, say aye. Uh, we'll do this by vote, yeah, by vote, yeah, voice vote, thank you. Uh, George Eamon, aye. Barry Jewell, aye. Paul Fortin, aye. Waters, aye. Okay, motions made, seconded. Uh, and the variances have been approved. And that takes care of that. Thanks, Doug. Thank you very much. We're done. Thank you. No, Doug. no, no. Wait, guys, wait. So if, in fact, caucus is on the 15th, uh, do you want me to set a meeting for 6 p.m. instead of 7 and limit it to the two things that are on our agenda? Do you want to do it at 5.30 so we don't, don't have to go back and do it? You come in twice. What? What did you just say? You, oh, you, I said if caucus is in fact on the 15th, we have two things on our agenda now for the 15th. Do you want to continue them to a different time, day or do you want to make an earlier meeting? I don't know. I, I, I don't care. I, uh, Makes no difference to me. Does anybody care? I don't want to have to ask this question tomorrow after I find out our caucus is on the 15th. Block, so. Well, my, this is Perry Jewell. And, you know, in the past, we've always met early, which was, I think, at six. And then Correct. that allowed people to yeah, go. We've had the caucus. And, we, you know, we just limited the items on the agenda to what had to be dealt with. And that would be those two items. And then we would. The only uh, reason I'm asking is we continued something to that meeting. So I just I want know. to make clear. Yeah. And he's under the impression, I think, that we were going to have it earlier. That's what we had said. Right. When he was on the and meeting. I do have somebody else on the agenda. So I guess I, I would lean toward that as opposed to changing the date and uh, trying to. Paul, Evan, are you OK with an earlier time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sounds great. Okie dokie. That's what I'll do if, in fact, we have caucus on the 15th. Okay. Uh, I don't see anything else on the agenda that we haven't addressed. Well, we have one more of, uh, don't we, of uh, Doug's? Yes. Uh, I think Dan Proctor is also on. Yes. And him and I uh, put together this 310 Sunny Hill Road, but we are actually going to ask to remove the groundwater offset and not uh, go that route anymore. Is, are you on, Dan, still? Yes. So ultimately, what happened was we originally designed we we're going to go for a four to three foot groundwater offset keep costs down aesthetically, what have you. Uh, new buyer approached me, said he didn't want to, um, you know, handcuff the property for potential future increase in, in flow, meaning adding bedrooms. So he is willing to pay for the additional one foot um, elevation. So we will not be asking for that offset tonight. So it's, it's is this a fully compliant system or you're taking it that, off the table? That's correct, fully compliant system. Okay. And Jim received the plans today at Neshoba. So no. I'm going to throw out the permit that I have here now. <laughs> if my wife did her job, they're down there, Jim. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to throw this permit out that you gave me, Jim? Sure. Okay. Sorry about that, Jim. Oh, uh, that's okay. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, which one is that? Sunny Hill Road. In Sunny Hill Road. Okay. Already checked for now. Yep. I'm ripping it up and throwing it out. Okay. Pick it up. Throw it away. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Right. You too. Okay. Anybody Thanks, anything you want to talk about? I was going to ask if I could ask a general question to do with um, a procedure. Sure. I did a septic plan two years ago, and 
it went through the board with several variances. It was a, um, a drip irrigation system. Um, it needed a variance and several local upgrades. Uh, I just changed the plan, got it back into Jim to start to review. And all I did was change the type of system. So instead of the uh, drip, now it is that geo mat system. Uh, elevations are exactly the same, um, size, shape, uh, all the distances. It's exactly basically the same footprint as the old. Do I have to go through um, all new variances because the system itself changed brand? Or can these um, variances and upgrade that passed on this site carry through to the new type? The board had seen this already and granted a, a permit for it? Yes, in 2009, yeah. two years ago. That's a gym question. That's a 10 years old? But I meant to. Did you say, did you say 2009? 2019, excuse me. Oh, 19. Okay. Jim? So, yeah, Tim. Technically, it should get a new permit. That that old plan was that old permit or the, the existing permit based on the plan that was submitted. And those variances were granted for the plan that was submitted at the time. Um, is there a significant difference in the two? You know, it's certainly not the the variances that are going to be requested, but the design plan is going to be different. So, just so it's a an accurate permit, it really should have those variances and local credit approvals. We yes, approved by the board. The paperwork, the, plan. the paperwork would change. The the record uh, would not stand for the 2019. So it would, yeah, it would have to come back. Okay, that's what I thought, but I figured yeah. I'd ask. So yep. uh, appreciate you uh, listening to that and giving me the answer. Thank you. Yep. What's the address? 200 Pleasant. All right, I'm going to put that on for the first meeting in April. Excuse me, uh, 244 Pleasant, I'm sorry. All right, I'm just putting it on my calendar so we can keep track of it. That wouldn't be till April. Okay. Okay, someone want to make a, a motion to adjourn? B. Motion has been made to adjourn. Somebody want to second? I'll second Chairman Paul Fortin. Okay, Paul. Uh, all in favor? Voice for the redeeman. Paul Fortin. Barry aye. Jewell. Aye. Barry? Barry Jewell, aye. Who's left? Uh, Evan. <laughs> Waters, aye. Aye, aye, aye. Good. We are adjourned. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. Appreciate it as always. Oh, God. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Yes, indeed. Okay, guys. So I made the most. Wait a minute. Is it. Re